Let's welcome our next fighter making his way to the cage, Jacob Wagaman. Coming to the cage now for this light heavyweight contest, Jacob Wagaman, the second Wagaman on tonight's card. At six feet, one inch tall, the 23-year-old is an orthodox fighter with only one fight, a loss on his record, a round three TKO against Justin Jones. His hometown is Fallbrook, California, fighting also like his brother out of Team Quest. He says he's a simple, unfrozen caveman warrior, which he says means that he's composed, but he likes primal things like smashing people. That's pretty funny. Now, he also is supposedly the better grappler of the two Wagman brothers. And it should be interesting to see because in the prior Wagman fight, we saw a lot of takedowns, a lot of good wrestling. So if he's the better grappler, I'm interested to see what he's going to do with takedowns and how he's going to control the ground because he's probably a pretty good grappler there. Yeah, his brother Joe, clearly a very talented wrestler. Uh, Jacob and Joe, the Wagman brothers, have been wrestling together for years. They've been training together for years. Uh, so they tend to push each other quite heavily, as brothers might. Jacob is currently studying mechanical engineering at Palomar here in Los Angeles, but he's looking to transfer either to UCSD or somewhere in Louisiana where his girlfriend happens to reside. Be careful with that one, Jacob. That's a big move. You mean Louisiana or the girlfriend? <laughs> Both. Both, all right. And his opponent making his way to the cage, JJ Peacemaker Mortimer! And Jacob's opponent in the blue corner, J.J. Mortimer. The 32-year-old stands six feet tall and three inches. He fights out of the orthodox stance. He has one win and one loss on his record. Most recently, a round one submission against Sid Sidberry. He's fighting out of the local boy, Thousand Oaks, California, from Boss Rutan's elite MMA. In fact, we happen to have Boss sitting just to the cage side to watch his fighter come out and try to impress on behalf of his gym. Yeah, and in that last fight that he won, he, he won with a, a fist choke, which is a boss root, boss root move that he took from uh, El Guapo. Now, it's a unique unique finish you don't see much. You see more, you know, you think of those type of chokes, you see more in jiu-jitsu conferences where you can, with the gi and you can push the fist into the neck. But a uh, no-gi fist choke, very, very nice. He said he likes a top game, so facing a wrestler, can he get to that top game? That's gonna be his challenge. You know, if there's one thing you do see from boss root and fighters, is a lot of unorthodox techniques, not in terms of martial arts overall, but in terms of the modern mixed martial arts standards. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys doing things that other fighters just aren't training, for whatever reason it might be. But if there's one thing boss knows, it's how to use techniques that others aren't using to their maximum effectiveness. That's correct. You see a lot of dangity, dangity, dang from the fighters that come from Rudin. Now, those that don't know what I'm talking about, just look it up online. You know, if uh, there's one thing I'm hoping for, it's a palm strike. And I asked JJ, he said, you never know. That's that pancrease. Boss Rudin, open hand strikes. He had to fight that way for a long time. So you know his fighters are probably familiar with open hand strikes. J.J. Mortimer is also a writer, a novelist, with a new book called Midnight Detective. Our next fight is brought to you by Pop Chips Los Angeles. Popped for your pleasure. Scheduled for three two-minute rounds in the 205-pound division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, a caveman fighter. He comes to the cage with no wins and one loss. He stands at six feet, one inch tall, and winning at 205.2 pounds, representing Team Quest from Fulbright, California, Jacob Wagaman. <laughs> and his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the blue corner. A freestyle fighter. He brings a record of one win and one loss to the cage with one win coming by way of submission. He stands at six feet, three inches tall and weighed in at, a, in at 200 pounds, fighting with Boss Rutan's elite MMA from Thousand Oaks, Thousand Oaks, California, JJ Peacemaker Mortimer. J.J. Mortimer in the blue corner looking like a villain from a Cold War era film. <laughs> Jacob Wagaman in the red with a smile to end all smiles. <laughs> yeah, it's a good juxtaposition. Go. 
JJ already looking very crisp, very straight. Yeah, you could tell the way Mortimer came out, he wanted to strike, and he was very tight and clean with it. Jacob caught a jab, and now he's looking to impose his game. He's got a nice single leg. Wagaman doing the Team Quest special, put you against the cage and knee you everywhere. Good takedown. Wagaman should, well, he's, he's falling into quarter guard here. He almost had a pass. He's still in side control, and now he can control it. He needs to settle down, figure out where he's at, and start going to work. You can see he's looking to mount soon, maybe. Yeah, Jacob being very aggressive with the grappling early on, and that aggression's looking like it's troublesome for him right now. JJ getting ready to replace the guard. Yeah, JJ doing a nice job there of getting his knee under. You know, that's one of the hard parts about a two minute round is you can't really take your time on the ground advancing position. Nice shoulder pressure from Wagaman. Getting a little high, he maybe get himself. There goes Mortimer replacing guard the whole way. Very nice, very composed guard work here. It's an interesting stand up when we get back to the guard, but I guess our referee didn't think that much was gonna be happening there. And of course, JJ Mortimer fires off immediately. Yeah, that was a weird stand up, but nonetheless, we're back to the feet. A nice, tight, tight stance. Yeah, you can see Wagaman only using his strikes to set up takedowns. Not really interested in engaging on the feet here. Right, but those takedowns are scoring points. Absolutely. <laughs> and the horn signifies the end of round number one. You know, you probably have to give that to Wagaman. Not a lot of damage, but definitely control. Yeah, I'd say zero damage, but definitely the control. If you're scoring it, the two takedowns, go to Wagaman. You know, Wagaman was saying beforehand that he really wants to put JJ on the ground. He's a true fighter. He wants to know that he's better in every aspect. And in particular, he just wants to grind and smash. Well, he got the grinding part down. I think this will be the round where he can look to smash a little bit. And then uh, for JJ Mortimer, I think the strategy is obvious. Keep it standing. Keep it standing. Be ready for the shot. And just keep it standing and fire some of those hard punches he started with. Because he has the advantage in stand-up, or at least that's what one round tells us. Well, you notice in that first round that every time Jacob came in, Mortimer, rather than standing his ground, was backing up and covering, even though Wagaman wasn't throwing big punches. So maybe this time he'll stay coming forward. You hear Boss saying straight punches, keep him away. There you go. A nice right hand from Mortimer. And it looked like Mortimer had the better position there, but now Wagaman showing off that wrestling pedigree he was bragging about. Maybe I spoke back, too soon. No, if he steps back too far, you're going to see Wagaman use that advantage with the wizard to turn him over, but... Nice, here's where Mortimer's going low. He's getting two legs. He should be able to finish here, but again, against a tough wrestler, it can be really hard to take him down. Well, Wagaman doing a good job of not letting Mortimer get his hands together. And doing damage with those elbows. Mortimer switches to the single now. Probably a good call there. I don't think he was going to get that double leg. I like him making interesting use of elbows. Yeah, I was about to say, I like his use of short little elbows. And you can hear him landing because they're right in front of us. They're landing well to the ribs. And yeah, we can hear those thuds, those thumps. And that is, a, I think, the third takedown tonight from various fighters that has not worked out. We have a single arm guillotine that Wagaman is threatening with. You know, Very dominant position right now. One thing about Wagaman, though, is he is relentless with the wrestling, which is good. Doing a little better, doing damage this time, but let's see if he can separate and actually create some points. Yeah, I don't think that one-arm guillotine, or, or, no, he's not He's not threatening with it, he's just controlling. I'd love to see him create a little bit of space, like you said, and then start creating some damage here. He's trying to sneak that one-arm under for a guillotine, but 
Good job by the ref if there's nothing happening. That was a good stand-up. You know, one thing we've seen so far from these two fighters, they're both very coachable. We've seen Wagaman listening to his corner. We've seen Mortimer listening to his corner. They're both listening very well. Yeah, they're doing a good job of hearing what their corner says and reacting. I think that Mortimer has to come out with a sense of urgency in round three. On my scorecard, he's down two rounds to zero. Do you see it the same way? Absolutely. You know, it's been very difficult for Mortimer. He's not using his ability to create distance, to create space very well. And again, just like round one, he's letting Wagaman control the clinch. He is, he's letting him control the clinch and kind of letting him control the pace a little bit. Again, I think a sense of urgency, some hard shots, not necessarily coming into him with hard shots, but planted and firing him. He has to win this round decisively. You know what I liked from Mortimer at the end of that last round was those leg kicks? Yes. You know, I think that's a good way to check a guy who wants to keep on coming in on you is beat up his front leg. Don't let him come forward like that. Round number three coming here between Jacob Wagaman in the red and J.J. Mortimer in the blue. Let's see if Mortimer comes out with a sense of urgency. Wouldn't be surprised to see a high kick. You normally don't want to throw those against people that are trying to take you down, but it's big damage opportunity. The fighters trading outside leg kicks. You know, what I like about Wagaman right now is he's changing angles and not letting Mortimer get set to throw strikes back at him. Yeah, he was using good footwork, changing angles, and Mortimer kind of backed himself up into that cage, and that gives Wagaman the green light to say, hey, shoot a takedown on me. And the dominant wrestler is in the dominant position again. You know, the one thing about the cage here at the U is the cage here is a little bit smaller than some, definitely smaller than a pro cage, so it makes the control of space way more important, especially against a wrestler like Wagaman. Yeah, Wagaman, I mean, Mortimer has to really get active here. He can't, he's kind of hanging out here on the bottom. Well, you know, we can't say we didn't expect this. This is the Team Quest special, the, the grab and hurt. Yeah, he's grinding him down. He's doing what he said, he's grinding him down. Just staying in a dominant top control position. He's just going to work. This is a nice blue collar job he's delivering right now. Mortimer though, throwing his legs up, definitely not trying to roll over. Yeah, he's stacked against that cage. It's gonna be hard for him to pull a serious submission here, stack that hard up against the cage, unless the right arm of Wagaman fires through. All right, he's looking for a potential triangle. You can see him getting his knee high, but when you stack that hard, this is going to be really difficult for Mortimer to do anything significant from this position. You know, with 20 seconds left, not much of a choke chance, but maybe with 10 seconds left here, he could land a miracle kick or a punch. Better throw everything he has into one punch. And a very smart decision by Wagaman to go back to where he's dominant, take the fight to the ground, and sure. You know, Wagaman definitely showed as build in this fight. They said that he was the better grappler of the Wagaman brothers, and I think that he backed that up. He backed that up. He took him down. He got the top position. He honestly avoided any serious damage. It was a very nice job by Jacob Wagaman. You know, especially when you're a young fighter, it's, and you all you have on your record is one loss, you really want to get in there and get that win at all costs. Not worried about being flashy. What you're worried about is building confidence, building yourself up, and creating what your next step is going to be. Yeah, a very, very strong workman-like performance. He should be quite satisfied. And it gives him opportunity to, one, go back and work on areas that he wants to build, and two, get back into his next fight as soon as he wants to because there's no, not going to be any damage that he has to deal with outside of maybe a sore leg from a couple kicks. Yeah, and especially with the, with how often there are fights in the Southern California area, a young amateur in this area can get six, seven, eight fights in a year if they stay healthy. Yep. To be honest, I think that Mortimer probably looks pretty healthy as well, not so much damage anywhere. I think that he just found himself against a guy who was able to impose his will. That's true, Mortimer can get right back in there. He he's really took almost no damage himself, you're correct. It was more positional, his ribs might be sore. There were some nice elbows, but as far as three rounds of action and both fighters coming out like they went in, this is one of those fights. You know, Mortimer's nickname is the Peacemaker, named for Wyatt Earp. Uh, but honestly, tonight, this was a very peaceful fight, as, if you can call a fight peaceful. <laughs> you 
The judges taking their time to make sure they have the scores tallied appropriately. Yeah, there should be no controversy uh, as far as no nail biters as far as who this decision is going to go to. Now, for those of you not familiar with the California Amateur Mixed Martial Arts Organization scoring system, we do use the half point system here, though. So f rounds can be much closer than you might imagine. So if you start seeing some odd this point five, that point five, that's the reason. You know, a lot of fans in the past have said the 10 point must system is a bit too rigid the way it's enforced. And here, Camo's really trying to pilot what they think might be the solution on the national level. That's a great decision. It's great to see this innovation in scoring because I think the 10 point system is too rigid, far too rigid, particularly in mixed martial arts when there's so much to account for. And somebody can be in a very controlling position but then get hit with more damage, you know, or you can have situations where someone's threatening with the submission the whole time from the bottom, or how do you score these things? And if you just have a 10-9 round, that doesn't allow the flexibility that the art requires. So a good move for California to drive that process forward. And now with our official decision, Sal Ariano. The scorecards are in, and the judges have delivered a unanimous decision. Judge Bell scores a fight at 30 to 28. Judge Ayers scores a fight 30 to 27. Judge McCarthy scores a fight 30 to 27. All in favor for your winner by unanimous decision. Out of the red corner, Jacob Wagaman! Jacob, congratulations, how you feeling? Feeling freaking awesome. Nice. Do you feel like you were able to stick to your game plan, especially going into the third after filling out your opponent for the first two rounds? Yeah, actually, it was actually a pretty new plan, but stuck to it and it's, it worked. Well done. Is there anything you want to say to your teammates and supporters? Yeah. All my friends, family, my second family at Team Quest, girlfriend, all you guys who supported me. Thanks a bunch. We love you, Jacob! Well, bye, bye. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Jacob Wagaman! Your winner by decision, Jacob Wagaman.